So I just run through quickly what I'm going to do for the next hour. Um, this is really um, like, a, like a beginning, first few steps into 2D flat animation. So we're going to, um, I'm going to show you a few slides and uh, we can talk about some, about some characters and character design. And then I'm going to crack open Photoshop and we're going to um, do some simple movements and a simple exercise that I think is really useful to do when you're starting out animating. Um, it teaches you quite a lot um, and it's something you can do quite quickly, but is, is you know, it teaches you a lot about uh, movement and about, uh, good evening, Dan. Ah, Vangelis is here. Hello. Good to see you. Um, teaches you a lot about uh, movement and frames and that kind of stuff. Okay, well it's five past. Let's crack on. So if I share, if I share my screen with yours, so you can see what I'm looking at here. All right, right here we go. So hi, welcome to an introduction to 2D animation, and we're going to be using Photoshop for this. Uh, my name is Dan Smith. I am the course leader and tutor on uh, digital design at uh, the British High School of Art Design in Moscow. Um, and this is just a short introduction, as I say, to 2D animation. Um, and, you know, your first few steps. So um, this here is, as you can see, by my background and this um, First slide here. This is a character of my new animation, which I'm working on this summer. Um, and this is just a little selection of the like environments uh, taken from that. So I've been busy over the last few weeks creating rocks and grass and bushes. And as you can see behind me, if you can still see me, trees, fir trees, and um, different things like that. So that's kind of fun. 2D. Um, I like this really lovely flat look. Everything is so three-dimensional now. It's, it's, it's nice to go back to, to two, 2D to flat design. Um, all right, so let's crack on. So, um, okay, slide two. So as I say, my name's Dan Smith. Um, I'm a digital designer. I've been a graphic designer for, for many, many years. Um, I'm a teacher and course leader, as I said already, at Art School Digital Design. And probably more importantly, though, I'm a massive geek when it comes to animation. I love all types of animation, um, especially 2D, because, as I say, it's got a that kind of old world charm. Um, and one of the things I was totally obsessed with in Britain as a kid was this guy here, Little Danger Mouse. Um, I think they brought this back, but you know, this was a, a classic 80s and 90s cartoon character, cartoon hero which uh, was saving the world in every episode. So that's what I thought when I saw that as a kid, I always thought to myself um, that it would be impossible to create such things. Um, and it took teams and teams of people to do this. But in fact, technology has moved so quickly that um, it is possible to, to create things like this. And um, it's always possible to do it on your own. Animation, generally is quite a slow process and um, you know frame by frame drawing not necessarily the same thing but a similar thing over and over again with very slight movements takes a certain kind of person and a certain kind of mindset it's quite rewarding you get a lot of other stuff done whilst drawing uh, a simple movement of a character you can listen to podcasts and whole albums and you know watch films in the background while you're doing it so it's quite it's quite kind of relaxing and you know it's 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 it's, it's amazingly fun the thing i would say is that animation any kind of animation takes a lot a lot a lot of work but the results are so incredible that it's worth the hard work every single time so let's move on to the next slide you probably recognize some of these characters. Um, I realized when putting these together that they're mainly all boys, all male characters. Um, but um, that was only when I got to the end of the slide. So I apologize for, there are lots of brilliant female characters in the world. Um, 
But these are just some animated, flat animated heroes of mine. Um, and you'll probably all recognize all of these um, from the brilliant work of McGurring of Futurama and The Simpsons um, and lots of brilliant adventures. I'm totally obsessed with Adventure Time at the moment as a as a hundred year old man, I probably shouldn't be watching so much uh, cartoon, but you know, it's a way of life. Okay, so, oops, this way, right. Now the first way, the first time I kind of got into animation was uh, actually just sketching um, little flip books, putting a, a, a few pages together, maybe your workbook at school, and starting off with a little character that, um, that changes on every page. And this is something that you can do anyway. So animation is really just a digital version of a flip book, really. You're, you're flicking between still images to make up a moving image. So our eyes see obviously in movement, right? And if you flick quickly between still images, that, that gives the impression of movement. And so, I suggest if you ever get stuck or you ever have a bit of time on your hands, try out um, a flipbook. Put a few pages together and create a character. Something simple like this. In fact, if I let me dive over to Photoshop and I, when I found this today, um, I, I animated this because I knew it was only what eight cells. So let me show you that quickly. Um, jump over to my shark. Here it is. And share this with you. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So that little flip up there, I stuck this together and um, and put it together so to show you what they would look like as a digital version of that flip book pages. So it's only how many eight separate drawings, and these are done in threes. So this is three frames. Uh, per slide, you see. So if we run through that, there's one, two, three for the first one, then it goes on to the second one. And as we move across, so it's only three frames. So it's done in, th we call that done in threes or, um, yeah, in threes. So let me go back to the presentation and we'll come back and see our shark friend in a minute. Uh, don't say anything. Um, let me stop sharing that and go back to presentation. Okay, where is it? It's very strange not hearing you or, or seeing what you're, if you're all there or not, but um, hopefully you're all there and you can all message and, uh, and speak. Um, okay, so we're back here. Right, so yes, flipbooks is a great way to get started and you know, carry, um, carry a few bits of paper around in your bag and you know, when you've got a minute sat on the bus or the metro or, you know, you're waiting for somebody to join you for coffee. You can just carry on sketching all the time. The next little, next little cell, one after another after another. And, you know, you build up this, this great little flip book animation. Okay, so basically when we're talking about, um, about frames per second, we're talking about the, the amount of separate images which go together to create something, uh, so to create a moving piece of film or moving animation. So it's very simple. Um, these are two examples here. This is, imagine this is one second of time. And if this was filmed on a camera, this would be at nine frames per second, you would get these photographs taken by the camera, right? It's grabbing these nine frames. Um, and so you can see there's a lot more detail in that than this one that's grabbing only six frames per second. See, so you're getting this first frame, but you're missing this one here, right? But you're getting this one and you're getting this one. So you can see using this as a basis to make an animation and a cartoon, you would, the more frames you put in, the smoother the action between between frames, so the action is much smoother. Um, 
let's jump on to the next one i'll explain that a little bit more so your television and your phones possibly more frames a second but your television and in the cinema you're watching everything on 24 frames per second so every every second there are 24 frames that you're you're watching the eye can see about 16 frames a second um so 24 everything is very smooth and um you know working working beautifully so what does that mean in in animation terms so if you're making an animation of 24 frames a second um and you created one frame one image per frame you would get after 24 drawings you would only have one second of footage so that is in once so here we go there's five frames and there's 24 frames so imagine this this second is a lot longer these are the first five and you can see this characters his arm slowly moving 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 this is called on ones right we're making 24 frames and this is a long long way to do it often in animation we call it on twos which means that every frame we repeat so we do two of each frame so for a second of footage we would only ever do 12 drawings but we would double them up right so that's half of the amount of drawings so already you're making a i don't know i should have done some mathematics but you're making a a, a two minute film and there are thousands of frames in that to do if you're doing at 12 frames per second and doubling up on the size of the of, of the, the 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 length of time that's being shown you're halving the amount of frames you have to draw and you don't necessarily sh it, it doesn't register that these frames are, are doubled um i'll show you in a minute in, in photoshop but um it's still perfectly smooth because the brain is taking in everything at the same rate um some fluid uh, movement is sometimes better to do on ones so if you really want some some something very smooth then maybe do that but if you're just any normal animation should be fine in twos and save yourself a lot of time all right okay so let's crack on um what i want to show you is a really nice exercise for starting movement and you know learning a little bit about um, a simple movement of, of, of something drawn over and over and over again now we're going to get this ball bouncing and i suggest this is a really good exercise for you to do either with me or or later on when you get a minute to sit down with photoshop um, and just repeat this exercise you learn so much about uh, about movement and about uh, about all this kind of stuff just by doing this now before we start bouncing this ball across our screen um there are a few states of this ball right so to show speed and to show the ball um, um, being made of, of a kind of rubbery consistency instead of just a solid, you know, this is a difference between a football maybe and a bowling ball. So something solid would always normally stay in this kind of round state and wouldn't um, elongate or squash. So something that's more rubbery and bouncy has this kind of elasticity to to be able to bounce and also if it was a solid block of a ball it wouldn't bounce too much as well it would probably hit the floor and you know make a few small bounces so we want a really bouncy bouncy ball so to show speed as well so with two things we're going to be doing here we're going to be showing this ball uh, being with some kind of elasticity to be able to bounce and also we're going to show it with a bit of speed so it's going to be closer together when it's going um, slowest. So at the at the top of the curve, when it's kind of getting to its uh, maximum and then going to fall, as it's falling, it gets faster. So the gap between it is going to be longer. So up here, it's very slow. But you see, it's going to jump, 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 and then it's going to get. It's going so fast that it's kind of got some. It's going to trick the eye into showing a little bit of motion blur by by changing its shape 
and then it squashes on the floor so it kind of bounces and then it bounces up again so these are the three states we're going to draw our ball in right let's jump over to photoshop and recreate this and i'll show you how this works all right everyone okay everyone all right there's a lot of chat going on um hopefully everyone's fine it's very strange not to hear you we've been doing online zoom classes with my digital design class for the last two months and um you know it's it's been fun to hear kind of uh, feedback as people are um as people are working right let me share you this photoshop um file okay share boom okay here we go so okay um let me turn that off and this needs a run through but and i'm going to show you this and then i'm going to um start a brand new um a brand new page and we're going to do this step by step so First of all, this is my background. It's a great idea. If you can see this over here, um, these are my layers. And it is always a brilliant idea to name your layers. Um, just in case you start getting up loads and loads and loads of layers. Um, if you've named them all, then you know everything runs so much smoother if you know which one's which. So this is my background. Um, and I've just sketched in kind of a ground some something for it the ball to bounce off of um then i did a bit of a, a sketch and i turned it down there we go turn it up again i drew a sketch of what i thought the path of this bouncing ball is going to be um and put it on this layer I turned it down so i can just about see it in the background but i know then I can keep a track of where this ball is going to go. And then I did this outline of a ball. So if I let this run through, yeah, good. So you can see it bouncing through there. Now the first two layers are just standard um, Photoshop layers. These upper layers here are what we call video layers. And I'll show you how to use these. These are, these are so much fun to use and you know really useful um i added on to, let me whoop, stop this and let me turn this one on this is called a little splash layer so what i wanted to do is give the ball a little bit of um a bit of kind of feeling like it, it hit the ground with a few little shocks like this so let me run that through just gives it a little bit of feeling like it's actually or if i turn my the path off that show you boom, boom boom and so then i thought to myself um maybe this ball could be a red ball let me turn that on in the splash and see it bounce a bit more right let us do this for real so okay so to do this um let's go to file and new and what do I want? I want to do I um, let's say 800 by 600 pixels uh, wide, 600 height, 800 wide, so it's kind of long and thin, and 72 DPI because we're on. Uh, we're just going to save this as a screen. You know, it's not going to be shown at the cinema or anything massive, so it doesn't have to be too big a resolution. And we're working in pixels, so I'm going to create this. Now, I've already got my timeline turned on, but if you don't see this, all you need to do is go up to window and come down and just above tool presets is what we call the timeline. So that looks like your normal Photoshop um, layout, right? In your kind of essential layouts. Got all your tools down this side, got all your layers over here. But if you want to start some animation, we go to window and we come down to timeline and it opens up this and so if you've ever done any editing in any other um in any other kind of um you know um, i can't think but premiere pro or after effects or anything like that very similar looking so we're going to click create video timeline and there we go so we've got we've got the beginnings now we can make a bit of space for ourselves here and 
let's double click on this and call this background. Uh, oh, okay, okay, let's spell it right. I'm over here. Okay, and um, what I'm going to do, I think we want the ground. So let's stick, let's stick, um, let's go with black. And yep, that looks all right. So I'm going to turn this brush down so it's finish. And I'm just going to draw whoop, a line along like this. Fine. So this is our ground. This is on the background layer. This is so I know where the ball is going to bounce. So it's going to hit here. It's going to hit here. So the next thing I want to do is um, draw a path for the bouncing ball. So I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to probably call this path. And it's a it's a transparent layer, so that's good. I'm going to grab my brush again, and I'm going to change the color of it. So uh, let's try. I did red last time. Let's find something else. Here we go. Bluish line. So this doesn't have to be beautiful. It just needs to kind of um, feel like you're going to follow this path. So first of all, is a good idea. I'm, I'm using both a mouse and um, a drawing pad, so a tablet. So I'm going to be using both. I quite like to swap between them. So first of all, I want to know where my hits are going to be. So I think my first bounce is going to be kind of there-ish. And we're going to bounce probably there. And then we're going to bounce off. So it's going to come in high. So let's think it's going to come in here. Then let's have a nice kind of bounce there. And maybe you know not so high. So you see, so it's losing momentum every time it bounces across. So that's just my guide, really. That is what I'm going to be following. So let me come over here and turn down the opacity of that layer so it doesn't just needs to be in the background. And what we're going to do, let's give ourselves a bit of space to see what we're doing. What I would like to do is now. Um, as I say, these are um, Photoshop layers over here, as you can see. What I want to do is add a video layer. So I'm going to come up to layer and I'm going to go to video layers and new blank video layer. Ching. And you see it's a different color. It's blue instead of purple. And also you can see it's got over here in the layers. You can see it's a video layer because it's got a little kind of... Um, video cells by or, or film cells to tell you that it's a video layer. All right, sorry, take a squeak of tea. Um, all right, make sure I'm up to everything. So background, yes, we've done our nice bouncy line. Right, so, um, oh, here's a good idea. Before we get started, we're gonna be drawing loads of balls. And so let's do uh, a blank layer and let's let's make this ball a nice what do you think what do you think uh, red purple pink let's make this nice kind of this kind of color All right and i want to grab a different brush something a bit more interesting so um uh, where am i do, do, do. um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's think about it. Oh, I kind of went wish my brushes. I know my brushes gone. Uh, what's that? That's not bad. But I want it to be. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, as a as a as a test, that's good. Right. So on this layer, what I want to do as a, as a little warm up, we might as well turn this stuff off. Or oh, leave that one on. On this layer. I'm just going to do a few tests. So I'm going to draw this circle over and over again. Um, so why not just, you know, get used to drawing it? Because you're going to be doing the same shape. So you want to just have a bit of a practice, right? So let's fill up. Um, because you want them quite looking similar, but they don't need to be exactly the same. Um, because this is, we want this to look hand drawn. So let's get, oh, there we go. That's it. So you see, after a while, you start nailing it totally. One, yes, okay. And once you've done a load, your brain is automatically getting the idea and it almost becomes like second nature to draw the same shape. All right, 
So once you've done a load of those, boom, get rid of it. Just stick it in the dustbin and now we're ready to go. So this is our video layer. Let's double click on this and call this something. Let's call this, uh, let's call this ball. So we know where it is. Right, and so make sure you're on this layer and it's highlighted gray. There's nothing worse than, than doing a load of, um, a load of lovely work and then realizing that you've accidentally been on the wrong layer. Ah, uh, drives you mental, but you know. So just keep in mind that you always wanna check over here that you're on the right layer. And let's make a start. So what we're gonna do is turn on onion skins. So enable onion skins. So this drop down over here, this is gonna say, there's a big list of drop down menus. So enable onion skins. Now what onion skins is gonna do, it's gonna show you the frame before you've drawn. It kind of ghosts the frame you've already drawn, right? So this'll, this'll make sense when we start, right? So, and also, uh, just quickly, we're gonna be doing on twos again. So I'm gonna draw the same frame twice. It's gonna not be perfect this both times. So the ball will have this kind of nice little kind of, kind of natural hand drawn feel about it. Um, here we go. So the first frame, let's do the first frame. So the first ball is over here. Let's do that. Yes, fine. Um, okay, so then we're going to move forward one frame. You see what that does? It ghosts it. So it, it's not there, but it is there because it's just showing you what was there before. So we want to draw it again. So on a, because we're doing on twos, I'm going to do each frame. I'm going to draw it twice. So there you go. That's terrible. So Command Z. Keep your fingers on Command Z if you're on a Mac or Control Z, I think if it's on a PC. Just, you know, you make it, ah, there you go, go back. No, that's no good, go back. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with, uh, with keep going back. There we go, that'll be fine. So that's two of my first frames done. So then I'm gonna go forward one frame. This is where we're gonna step forward, if you can see this over here. This is step frame forward and that's step frame back. Then what's this one? How are we doing for time? We're doing all right. So this one's going to be here. Step forward. Draw this one again. Step forward. You see, so I'm doing two at a time. So this is getting a bit faster now. So it's a bit further away. Step forward. And I need to draw this twice. Whoop. Step forward. And because this is really speeding up, it's coming into here. Now this is a bit of more of an oval because it's going really fast. No, that's no good. Command Z, get rid of it. That'll do. That's all right. Need two of them. Yeah, that'll do. Now, the next one is going to be the bounce on the floor. So it's going to then bounce and squish. So it needs to be like that. That'll do. Now, you'll take your time and you, oops, that's no good. You'll do it much better than me because you'll take your time and do it bit better we are always a bit pressed for time so we're going to crack on so two of those then it's going to bounce upwards so there we go that will do that's looking good as you can see every time i move on it's just ghosts the next one and we get to the top here that's not bad And obviously, the more frames you do, the more smooth it's going to be. And we're going over the top, so it's slow down at the arc of this, this bounce. Down the other side, so it's going to then speed up again as it's falling. Gravity is bringing it down here. Two of them. And there we go, a bit faster faster i mean these are good guides so you could then go back when you when you're happy with this the shape of them you can then go back in and you know tidy them each up and then what's this this is going to be the bouncing one so this is going to like a squashed one on the floor i hope you're all doing all right you everyone okay good uh right then the bounce up here nope that's no good that'll do 
draw the same. But as you see, it's kind of, they're all going to be slightly different, which I quite like. Yeah. And then, then it's going to head off. Ah, uh -huh. yes, another one of them. And then it's almost totally off the edge here. And then I'm going to move forward two more and leave those blank. One, two, yeah. And I think that's going to be fine. So I'm going to drag my video layer down here. And I'm also going to drag these layers down. And that will bring this down here. And let's make this a bit bigger. And then let's hit play. And this will just have a quick render through. Oh, I know what I need to do. So see it really lovely and smooth. We go back over here. And we go back to enable onion skins. And we're going to unclick that. So that we can't see the onion skin. The onion skin was seeing the kind of the, the pale version of itself before and after. So you get the idea of where it's going. Let it run through once to just kind of put the frames together. And maybe let's turn the path off so we don't need to see the path. Okay, so we've got this ball bouncing now. And as you can see, let me scan through it frame by frame. It does slightly change. It's got that bounce there, that's not too bad. But you know, you're gonna do this hopefully and take a bit more time over doing it. Um, so you know it's gonna look a lot nicer, a lot neater. Let's add some some kind of motion, some splashes into it. So let's grab a layer and let's go to video layers and new blank layer. And let's re, let's, oh, that's fine here, but let's bring that up there. And I'm gonna call this uh, kind of splash or something. Uh, oh, splash. yeah, okay. Now, um, let me grab another color. Well, if it's a splash, it's, let's make it blue. So maybe this is a, is a wet pavement. And what I'm gonna do is find the place where it hits the ground. Um, there, yep, okay. And on this layer, make sure this one is highlighted. I'm going to give it a little bit of movement. Yeah, that do. I kind of really nice. This is a pretty good brush for doing this kind of stuff. Let's go mad. Let's do a load. Right. And then let's go forward one frame. Oh, I need to enable again uh, onion layers, onion skin, sorry, so I can see the um, where it's going to go. So it's quite a useful tool, that. Um, okay, so I'm on this next layer and I want to kind of continue their journey a little bit. So let's do. No, let's do that. Yep, that maybe a little there. So that's the second part of this splash. Maybe let's just grab a few because they're no longer there. That'll do. Okay. And I think let's do some when it hits the ground here as well. So which one are we on? One. To... Ah, right, so what's it doing cleverly? Because we've got some drawings already here. It's showing us the before and after. So that's what I mean by onion skins. And it's called onion skins because, you know, the, the amount of different layers on an onion. So it's showing you the, the frame in front of it and the, sh the frame behind it. So sometimes it's kind of could be maybe a good idea to turn that off. So you can see, right, there it is. And then just turn it back on again so you know that's definitely the right one. So we want some more splashes here. There you go. Oof. Oof. Good. And then we're going to move forward one and finish these movements off. Try and get it in the same direction as this movement. Maybe some little ones in here. That's quite big. There you go. Uh-huh, that'll do. Okay, so let's turn off um, onion skins. And oh, that looks a bit messy, but it's gonna be such a quick, um, 
it's going to be so quick that you know the eye will will not see the detail on it so there we go that's kind of fun um and so the difference between using a video layer and using a normal layer is that you can draw on it you know every single frame where well, you can't do that with just standard um standard layers like this all right um that's kind of interesting um so try that out for yourself um and you know give this a clean up so you can go back in here and where well, let's go to our ball layer and you know don't think that uh, it's it's once it's drawn it's 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 finished you can always tidy things up see let's give that a little tidy up um, you know you could come back in and fix that if you wanted to whoop it's the wrong color let's pick that red so once it's drawn it doesn't it's not it's not it's not stay drawn you know you could you could color in each each clip if you wanted to um, and you can definitely go in and, and tidy things up so use this technique as as your rough sketch and then you see there let's let's definitely come in and tidy that up this use this um oh, that's not good that's no good but you know what i mean give it a nice tidy up there um the other nice technique you can do with this um is what i've done here if you want to animate um text if you want to give titles to your to your short film this is a really nice way of doing that to give your to give your to give a bit of life to something which is written and also to give something a more of a handmade feel um, this is quite a nice technique so this is what we're going to create um, we're going to do this nice and quickly and a bit smarter than this so let me dump that video layer and let me make this a bit bigger um, and let's change this so let's write something else uh, let's grab the text and let's say um i don't know thank you there we go let's say thank you very much you're making a nice little animation for a friend to say thank you to them so uh let's make this a little smaller so let's animate this yeah now we can do this oh message right so we're using this as as a, as a base so we want to create um, a video layer over the top of this so let's go to layer and video layer new blank video layer and ah there it is let's drag it into place there now we're using this we can probably turn the opacity down on that a little bit so that we can see it so it's just ghosted so we're going to come back to the beginning and let's grab a nice color oh look at that something you know something pretty interesting and let's see if we've got any oh, i have to load some brushes all my brushes have disappeared but that's okay um, what's that like okay something that's got a bit okay so what we're going to do is however well you write this over the top you are never going to write it in the same way twice but that's okay because we don't want it to be perfect we want it to be quite perfect but not totally perfect so let's just crack on um so here we go so it's just a matter of using this behind as a guide oh why is it not working come on we're not sticking in so you know uh -huh. okay okay let's turn to this push oops that's not good Mm -hmm. okay then we're going to move forward a frame and that's going to totally disappear and i'm going to probably pick another brush yeah okay yeah right and then i'm going to do it again 
let's just grab i'm trying to be clever on news good brushes so it's just a question of doing it over and over again and you know you can go a bit slower than me and yes Hold one more maybe let's change up the color um that'll do yeah okay here we go so boop do 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 do, do. so we're just going to repeat this and as i say you'll do it nice and simply and cleaner much cleaner than me why did i pick such a long word never mind it'll look good afterwards as you'll see and this is really lovely for handmade titles for end credits um anything like that and let's grab another color okay i think this will do this will give you an idea of what i'm trying to get at in that in that amount or should we just do one more yes just do one more let's grab an orange while we're here as i say um uh animation it takes you know it's not an easy process um well no it's not that it's not easy it's 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 easy in times but it's just repetitive and as soon as you understand that um you're fine for for a lot of animators, it's nice to move slowly and create something. Right, let's just do this one more, and then I'll show you what the result's going to look like. But hopefully, it'll t show you um, how it goes and the technique. I've just done this for an actual title on a, on a film recently, and the, the result was so lovely. So. There we go. That's enough. Let's scroll that down to there. So it's only going to repeat those. What is that? Two, four, six, eight, eight frames. I'm going to turn this one off because I don't want that. That was my guide, right? So let's hit play. There you go. Whoa. Okay. It's a little bit um, psychedelic, but you kind of get the idea that you can give some movement to something and um, can make really lovely titles. And if you're, if you're, um, you're a bit more you know maybe maybe repeat some of them so copy and paste them over and over top of each other um you, know, you can get this really lovely smooth smooth um motion going all right um that's like that let me and with bouncy ball um the other interesting thing let me just turn some of this stuff off um and that don't need that. Ah, okay. So when we talk about um, about movement in characters, um, you're going to want quickly, I guess, like I was as soon as I started animating, is to get a character moving, and this can be done in in eight separate poses to get a nice kind of walk cycle, and. You can obviously study life, and but there are plenty of things like this out there which really help you to to to, to understand the different um, different patterns of something moving, someone or somebody moving. Um, or there's one question: Could I send a lecture video? Um, yeah, I'm sure. I do teach this in the um, in digital design. Um, this is this is a really lovely part of the. Um, of, of right at the beginning in october when we start level one digital design uh, for who asked the question hopefully i read that correctly um we start with photoshop and once you've got a hang of using layers and um, and, and and things like that we introduce we, well, we start with gif animations which are really lovely to share and to, to send over to your friends and stuff like that so we start with gif animations but then we move on to to more complex 2d animations in the first year of uh, digital design so yeah that's that's cool so and and well the, this is a great point 
this is one of the first things. I use this actual um, little guy here to, 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 to show how a walk cycle is put together. So you've got, you see you've got contact here. So this is when this nearest foot is on the floor and the back foot is, is striding forwards. Then we've got the recoil where the, the, that foot that was on the floor, that one's now taken the weight and this one is kicking forward. And you've got then the front leg moving forward and another contact, see, so it flips around but the other foot and so forth and so forth. So I whipped this into a quick animation earlier. Here we go, this is also, I think, done on twos. Let me make a bit of space. Um, and, well, it's looped, so it will go on and on and on. Here we go, so here he is. So you can see, um, you can see there are some, it does flicker a little bit, but these are the main frames between a walk cycle. Um, now what these really represent are the main strong poses what you would want to do is add in uh, the in-betweens we call them the, the the shots in between these but you can pretty much quite quickly see that that's quite a nice movement right he's throwing his back leg forward and his front leg and so you know and that's in i did this in layers so if we come over here you can see the the separate layers there's that one this one before and all I did was, I was cut out each of these and stick them in over the top of each other. And then in the timeline, spread them out of two. I left them in twos. Are they twos? One, two. Oh, no, they're in threes, actually. I think twos was a bit too fast because there are only eight cycles. So if I go back to my uh, PDF, I can show you what I mean by, um, what I mean by, by in-betweens. So let me share you this. I'm talking a lot, aren't I? Sorry, I don't often talk this much. Um, that's a lie I do. I do want to talk quite a lot. Right, so we've done this now. Give that a go. Um, yeah, um, give that a go. It's a, it's a really useful, useful tool. Even if you just you know, save it or delete it afterwards, it will teach you so much in, in, in doing this simple task. It's brilliant. So in a walk cycle, like we had a little friend there jumping and bumbling along like he was, he was doing these main poses, which as I've written here, these are the main poses. And I've got this wave here, which is um, the kind of height of him as he goes, um, kind of the height of his head um, from pose to pose. So we've got this kind of nice wave. And these are the main poses between each, you see? So, Number one, and this will be number what, eight, I guess, is the same pose. So we have to go through everything. The middle one is the opposite way around to that. So these are your main poses. So in Photoshop, in, um, in, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a video layer, you could sketch these out and then jump backwards and forwards between poses. So maybe start this one and then flick forward um what would that be so one two three four five six seven eight so get to eight and draw this pose then another eight draw this pose and another eight and so on and so on and so on and then you want to go back and do the in-between so you then you can watch this through and that'll be quite a nice like smooth animation right you'll get to see how it's going to start moving and then you want to talk about think about the in-betweens right the, the the shots that link this position to this position he hasn't even got any arms this, this character so you would want to think about where the arms are going to go is he carrying something um how is his head going to get from here to here obviously you can sketch this out um so good advice do your do your main um your your bulk Normally where there's kind of weight on legs is really useful. And when there's some you know, crossing movements and stuff, and then you can do your in-betweens. So that's, that's always good, useful tip. Um, and then you want to think about your character. Once you've, once you've sketched out your character, I mean, this is just basically a skeleton for you to then go on and, and, and bring to life. So um, 
there are plenty of different characters. And we do this a lot in uh, digital design as well at uh, Britannica. Um, character, anim um, character design and character animation. Um, this is um, two characters from my new animation, which I'm working on at the moment. Um, first of all, done in a sketchbook, this old kind of fisherman, piratey guy. And obviously, the whole village where they live is being attacked by this zombie guys. So, you know, from hand drawn to quite nice, flat, I think this isn't the finished look, but I wanted this flat feel of these characters. But think about bulk, think about shape. Um, and the more interesting looking they are, see, this is still pretty boring. He's got something going on, possibly, but you know three or four more drawings of the same thing will start to to get the character looking uh, how you want it so this is useful think about shape um think about stance and you know is he really strong is he is he really fat is she is she kind of tall and thin or you know is it a creature or is it a person um and putting blocks together can create some kind of interesting shapes. So think about your characters in, um, even before you start a walk cycle, think about their, their shape, because this little guy, he's kind of, he's big in the middle and kind of at the top, but his little legs will be moving really fast and kind of quite insignificant. So that walk cycle would be totally different to this guy here, who's, who's got a tiny body, but a really long, thin legs and head. So he is walk cycle, he would be all legs and probably some swingy arms. Whereas this guy's walk cycle would be totally different. He would have these like little kind of like little hoof running um, movement, right? So maybe this guy, he's got big shoulders. So he's, his movement is going to be totally different as well. So use, use this as your skeleton, but then think about the, the, the bulk and the shape of your character over the top of this. Um, there we go, really. That's pretty much uh, getting close to the end. Um, there are so many more things I need to tell you about animation, but I think that's, that's not a bad start. Um, using the bouncy ball, um, you know, that is something I do not, very regularly once a month or so just to remind myself about how a ball would bounce and uh, having a squishy ball on your desk to, to to play with maybe to help you think about um, the elasticity of, of things and once you've got something moving and a bit more realistic it's quite good fun to to, to do it a couple of times um, something we don't have time for in the year because we've got so much to cram into digital design course but it would be great to 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 do that um to do the bouncy ball task and then two months later do it again and and, and add what you've learned on in between you know so um give it a go i don't know how you can share it with us if you do give it a go and you render it out. Oh, how do you render it out? That's a great question. Let's jump back to, um, while we've got a couple of minutes left, let me just you know, show you one or two little bits and pieces about, um, let me stop showing that and come over to my Photoshop again. Right, very quickly, because I think I'm sure you all got stuff to do. Right. Once you've done this, um, you have to save it as a video file um, or GIF or something like that. So, you know, so you don't lose your, your work. So um, there are a couple of ways to do it. Like in Photoshop, there are always uh, like two or three ways to do everything. So you could just export it, uh, I guess, as a video file. You could export it as a GIF, which is quite nice. Or you could render it out, just render video. And it would render it out as a as a MOV or as a MP4, um, and that's it, right? Then you can import it into whatever software you could then use to add sound effects and stuff like that. But then you can also, if you just wanted this as a simple GIF to stick on your in, uh, on your Instagram or something, you can also render it out as a GIF. So there are two ways to to render a video. Here we go. So 
let's have a look here so h264 there's a really good way it's 24 frames a second as we want it um and what are we doing do we do we do okay we're going in that folder yeah so when you get to this here we can then is how you render it out in format and there's plenty of drop downs so just have a bit of a test of what you think is best for you um h264 for me is pretty much good for everything it's a really nice all-rounder um so yeah there's a way to save it as a video file or to export it as a gif probably save for web and uh, just swap it from jpeg to gif and uh here we go so yep it's already a gift so let's have a quick play through okay so that's what it's going to save as it's good uh, a gif is going to save it as a really nice small file size um that you can share with everybody and uh yeah it's nice nice file size rent it out as a video if you wanted then to bring it into premiere or after effects to add sound effects and music and stuff like that which is something I really wish we had time to show you, but, um, but there we go. Right, look at that. It's, it's seven o'clock here in Moscow. So uh, thank you. Um, no worries, thank you very much. It's really weird not hearing you or speaking to you, but thank you for those who have commented. Um, and you know, you're very welcome if you live in Moscow and you're in the right age bracket um, to drop by and see us. Um, let me just quickly share you this once more so yes um if you fancy learning a bit more about photoshop and illustrator and uh, after effects and uh, indesign things like that then come and see us have a look we share a lot of our past students work on um, our instagram account bhsad digital design underscore underscore and on our facebook page so Brutanka digital design there's plenty of works on there um, and um, yeah, I guess if you want to hashtag BHSAD digital design, if you put anything on your Instagram, um, then we'll be able to see it and uh, I'll have a look later and see what you're up to. Good luck. Thank you very much for stopping by. Um, yeah, well done. Thank you very much. Happy um, animating. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.